of you may remember, or how can you not remember when the COVID-19 COVID struck the pandemic? <laughs> how can you not remember, right? right? When that first started. And I remember way back when, and I don't know if you remember, I had asked the Lord what was happening. Do you remember that? And I felt like He told me that in that time, He was purifying His bride, the church, for us. In that time, a two and a half, three years, whatever it's been, and we're still just coming out of that, He was purifying His church. And why is He purifying His church? Because how many know He's coming back for a church without spot and wrinkle? Now today I want to give you a little bit of a heavier message Come on. because I'm going to tell you right now firsthand I've been experiencing it and living it out myself. But one of the ways that He purifies us is when we begin to draw closer to Him. How many know that He can't purify anyone if we're walking on the outskirts of relationship with Him. Right. We're experiencing a lot of other things, but we're not really experiencing Him. Yes. Only as we begin to draw closer to Him do we experience that closerness, if I can say that, to Him, but also as we draw closer to Him, he begins to purify us. And that's why many don't draw close to Him because they don't want to be purified. How many know that when we walk close to Jesus, we begin to look more and more like Him? Yes. That's the purification process. Amen? Amen? Yes. That's part of it. And so during those couple years, two and a half years, even now, it hasn't stopped. I've been drawing closer and closer to Him. And by the time I gave notice to Alpha and Omega where I was working part-time, that I was not going to come back after their shutdown, the Lord began to screen me what I felt like through a fine screen. Began to screen me like I was going through a filter. And I remember telling my wife, it was much harder to serve the Lord going full-time with Him as to working part-time with Alpha and Omega. You don't know the spiritual battles that I went through. The things that I had to grapple with. I have no understanding. It was tough. Sometimes I didn't know if I was coming or going. But I hung in there and I kept drawing close. And He brought me through. You see, God was really beginning to purify me. And why again was God purifying His bride, the church? Because He's getting us ready for His return. Yes. When He takes His bride back to Himself. He's getting us ready. And again, the Bible says the Lord is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. We see this in Ephesians 5.27 where it says that He might present her, meaning the church, to Himself. A glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that she should be holy and without blemish. Woo! Pretty tall order, isn't it? Yeah. But God's going to do it. We can't do it. We can't do that. We can't become that on ourselves. Only as we submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit can He do that through us. We can't work it out. Adam, are you hearing me today, brother? This is speaking to you too. <laughs> oh, God is speaking to this young man. It's good. It's good. It's good. I see him just like intently looking at it. It's like, oh man, he's just like... <laughs> Drinking it up. Praise God. I hope in these last years since COVID, 
that you have been also drawing closer to the Lord like I have. I've preached messages on it. I spoke on it many times. I hope you've been drawing closer. I also hope that you have been allowing Him to knock those things off you that don't belong there. Because that's part of the purifying process. Amen? We can't live like we lived in the yesterdays. And many Christians are trying to do the same old, same old, what they used to do years ago. No! There's got to be a change. There should be a change. Amen? Amen. I challenge you in the change. We can't stay the same. We can't. Just recently, I have opened myself up to the Lord even to another level or another further filtering, unbeknownst to me. <laughs> you know, I have one thing I have been very concerned about is our church here in East Rochester. It's been this is probably one of the places that has been so hard to find new people coming in compared to all the other places that we've been at. Yes. And I've been saying, Lord, what is going on there? What is happening? Is am I the problem? If I am, I'll be willing to step down. That's been my concern. Well, he didn't answer me with what I questioned him with, but he did take the up that opportunity to show me things about myself that crushed me. Crushed me. Devastated me things that I didn't even really understand. Where I didn't have a good understanding. But it was a good crushing. God never crushes us or breaks us in a bad way, but He breaks us for our good. Amen. He breaks us for our good. And if you've never been through a breaking of God, man, we need to be broken for Him. like the alabaster box when it was broken open a sweet perfume comes out when he breaks us a sweet perfume comes out that is an aroma to his nostrils amen allow yourself to be broken for him to make a long story short let me just tell you how this began to happen I watched a pastor from Uganda give a testimony how the Lord dealt with him. A powerful, powerful testimony. A man was moving in miracles. He was preaching the gospel. He was doing all those things that should be done in his country. And then one day a sister in the Lord brings him a scripture that devastated him and God began to work on him. I forgot what the scripture is now, but it really impacted him to the point where he began to seek the Lord and say, Lord, where, where are you speaking to? What have I been doing wrong? And he went through a great breaking when he thought he was all right. He thought he was okay. He went through a great breaking to the point where the Lord spoke to him and said, if I were to come back today for my church, you would not be ready to come with me. I'm going, wow. That really was heavy. He realized there were things in his heart that were not right and left untouched. He wouldn't be ready to go when the rapture occurred. And the Lord actually spoke that to him. He was devastated. He was crushed. The ways of his heart. The thinking of his heart. Oh, his actions may have been okay on the outside. 
but there were ways of his heart that were wrong. And how many of you know that God looks at the heart, not just on the outside of us? And when he went through it and got things right, the Lord told him, warn the church. He says, warn the church about what I've spoken to you. Warn the church. You see, God deals with both our acts or actions, but He also deals with our hearts or our ways. Our ways that we think that determine our lifestyle, that comes from our hearts. Our ways, our issues of life. And it's not always enough to deal with our acts because he may have to go to the heart of the problem, pun, pun intended. He may have to go to the heart of the problem because our hearts many times are problematic and we don't even realize it. It can be quite problematic. In Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10 it says this, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. Let me tell you something. The Lord always searches our hearts. Always. Always. It says further, I test the mind, the thoughts even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings, or the fruit of his ways, of his thoughts, of his thoughts. He knows how wicked and defeat, deceitful our hearts can be. Don't try to justify yourself and say, oh, my heart is perfect. Don't you even dare. <laughs> Don't you even dare. Uh -huh. There are times that we don't even understand how wrong our hearts can be until God points it out. When I was listening to that message of that pastor from Uganda, God began to start pointing out things in my heart. And I got crushed right there. Crushed. I said, oh, God, forgive me. Forgive me. And for the next couple days, he worked on me. He brought things up to my, my mind that I've done and where it's come from my heart. And I repented. And I said, Lord, forgive me. I don't want to have a heart like that. Jesus said this concerning the heart. Matthew 15, 19, and 20, he says, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. You can roll in the mud all day long, get all the germs on you all from your head to toe, but that won't defile you when God sons. No. But it's what comes from here. It's what we be, are thinking about can defile a person. Pastor Jim, this is just too hard of a message. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> I would love to say, oh my gosh, when I listen to that Ugandan message from that Ugandan pastor, I'm okay. I don't qualify in those categories. Oh no. The Lord said, Jim, this is you. <laughs> Jesus. 
this is you. <laughs> I began to tell my wife about it. Janine, one of the hardest things you have to do. My heart has been wrong in some areas. And I had to repent. It's hard at times to confess your faults and sins. But you know what? More so than anything, I want my heart to be right before God. Yes. Yes. More so than anything. Yes. There are things that I've thought about that have been wrong. Things that I dwell on. See, it's not thoughts that come in your mind and you pass away. It's the things you dwell on mm -hmm. in your heart. And we know when we dwell on wrong things. When we're imagining wrong things, fantasizing wrong things. We know it. It's not a passing thought that we knock out of there. But it's the things we dwell on. And there were things I've dwelled on that have been wrong. And I confess it. And I repented it over it. And I said, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, help me be free of it from this time forth. And it's going to be a process. Because all, most of my life I thought that way. And so it's a whole new thing to think of. i got to think differently. I can't dwell on those things that I used to dwell on. It's a filtering process. God is filtering us. And He's getting His bride ready. Because I want to be ready when He comes. I know it's close. It's close. The signs of the times are out there. We don't want to be caught with our pants down. <laughs> right? Yeah. No. But Jesus said that about the hearts. The hearts can be very problematic because from, from it springs the issues of life or our ways which determines how we live. God is not concerned with our actions or, or is not only concerned with our actions or deeds, but He's also concerned where these actions or deeds come from, spring forth from. Because unless we go to the root of the problem, we can clean up our acts, but unless we go to the root of the problem, those acts can come right back again. Amen. Thank God he's in the business, the heart-mending business. Thank God he's in that business. He mends the hearts. Amen? Amen. He mends the hearts. And again, many times we really don't understand the true condition we are in until God reveals it to us. In Isaiah 6, 5 through 7, how many know that Isaiah was called to be a prophet and he had an event where he stood before the Lord before God sent him on that call. And here he's in the presence of the Lord and all of a sudden he got a revelation about himself. God had to clean him up before he went. And it said this, so I said, and this is Isaiah speaking, woe is me. For I am undone. God just laid him out. God just opened up his heart and showed him his true condition. Woe is me for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Let me tell you something, people of God. When we stand before the, before the Lord, because of His holiness and purity, everything about us, we will see Him as He is, but everything about us will also be revealed. 
everything. So if there are things that need to be taken care of, better we do it now than when we stand before Him. Let's get it taken care of now. And then Isaiah 6.6 6 says, Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having his hand, having in his hand a live coal which he had taken from the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Isaiah was a man who came into the presence of the Lord. And when he saw the Lord in His holiness again and purity, he saw himself in His true condition. As he was. And he said, Woe is me. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Woe is me. He had a breaking and was devastated because he saw himself in his true condition. And in a sense, his heart was laid open before him. If we're going to have that revelation to get our hearts in order, we need that same type of revelation that Isaiah had. God only reveals, understand this people, God only reveals what He wants to heal. It goes for our physical illnesses, it goes for our mental disorders, and it goes to what we need in our hearts today. He only reveals what He wants to heal. He doesn't do it and make fun and poke fun or have fun with us to abuse us. God is not in the abusive business. But He's in the healing business. If we will allow Him, He will show us our hearts and what their true condition really is. When Isaiah saw his heart and exclaimed in desperation, Woe is me! The angel provided a coal to touch his lips. And in that touching, God cleansed him where he, his ways were clean before the Lord. All you need is a touch by the Lord. Amen. That's all you need is just one touch. Just one touch. David, the King David, when confronted with his sin with Bathsheba, he also cried in desperation. In 2 Samuel 12, 13 and 14, it says, So David said to Nathan, when he was confronted with his sin, I have sinned against the Lord. He didn't try to justify it. He didn't try to make excuses for it. Like many of us try to do. Don't make excuses for it. Don't try to justify it. If God points something out, repent of it. Acknowledge it and repent of it. It's that simple. It's that simple. David said, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. Because he was willing to repent. Acknowledge repent. You shall not die. I put this thing from you. Because you have humbled yourself before me. You didn't try to excuse yourself. And you didn't try to justify it. But you came clean. Amen? Amen. You came clean. And then he says to him, However, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also who is born to you shall surely die. David had to still suffer consequences. But in the end, he was saved by the Lord. God spared him because his heart was right. In his desperation, David penned Psalm 51. If you, if you ever never, if you have never read it, or if you read it and haven't really understood why it was penned, 
He penned Psalm 51 for that very reason. When God called him and confronted him and he repented. So he penned Psalm 51 and especially these words in Psalm 51, 10 and 11, he says this, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast, or others would say, a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Amen? Amen. Today, like David, we too need clean hearts. There's probably, and if you're not, praise God, you're one of the few that you don't need to hear this message. Thank God. But many of us have been harboring things in our hearts that we know are not right with God. When I say harboring, we dwell on certain types of thoughts that we know are wrong. And if you don't think they're wrong, just ask yourself, do these thoughts make me more like Jesus? Okay? Just ask yourself that. Or do these thoughts detract how I should be looking like Jesus? Just ask yourself that. And then you'll be able to understand what kind of thoughts you have. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. It's not enough for us to clean up our acts, but we also need to clean up our ways and that our acts spring from. If we dwell on thoughts that we know are wrong, then we need a clean heart. As David said, created me a clean heart. Today the Lord is coming back for a church that's without spot or wrinkle. Pastor Jim, why are you preaching this message? I would say to you if you ask me that, how can I not preach it? It's part of the Word of God. It's the truth. Am I to deny you that? And then one day, I'm held responsible and accountable and the Lord says to me, why didn't you ever give them this Word? Better that you all run out of here and never come back here again because I gave you this Word than I withhold it and this church is full of people. I'd rather have no church and speak the truth than a full church and not give you the true word of God. And let me tell you something. There's many who are withholding the truth of the word. Many are withholding. Because this is not what would you say? A famous type of message. This is not something that people just coveted over. Oh, I can't wait to hear. You know the funny thing? I was telling Jesse about it, Jesse and Connor, and she made a, a, a commitment to uh, visit Connor's church today because she's never been there. And when I told them about what I was preaching yesterday, she said, Dumb! Why did I make that commitment? I wanted to be there for that. And I'm looking at her like, you're crazy. <laughs> really? Those are the kind of messages you run away from. And they're both going, yeah, Pastor Jim, that, that, or Jim, well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Jesse Dad. <did. laughs> That's a good message, Dad. Got for the recording. What's that? Sorry. Thank God for the recording. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But well, she says I'm going to listen. Yeah, but okay. <laughs> Yeah. We can't do the clean up ourselves, people of God. You can't do it in your own power. You can't do it. God knows. It's God. Help me. Help me. 
We can't do the clean up to ourselves, but only as we allow the Holy Spirit to search us and help us and give us the strength to control what we think about. And He gives us that control. Since I, God began to put His finger on some of these areas in my heart, some of those thoughts started to come back. But the minute they came back, I fell under great conviction. It's like, oh my gosh! And, and it's just the weight of the Holy Spirit on me. And I said, and I quickly, out you go! I am not dwelling on that anymore! Yeah. Yeah. What are you dwelling on? And as we continue to cast those things from us, that we know are wrong, whatever those things are, soon they won't come to us as often as they used to, to the point where finally they will fall away. Yeah. Move on. It's a process. It's a process, people. Your part through the Holy Spirit is to resist, because the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yeah, that's true. Amen. Amen. And it's not only in outside actions and temptations, but it's also what you think about in your hearts. Because God gives you the power to take all your thoughts and bring them in captivity into the subjection of Christ. He gives you the power to do it. Doesn't mean it won't pop back again. You take them again. To Christ you go. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. He will not only search us, but help us to clean up our ways, issues, and the issues of our hearts. So let us bow before Him today. So we will be ready when He comes to take us away. Amen? You know, this Ugandan pastor said this, and I'm going, oh my. He said that the Lord spoke to him and said, there will be many that will come and say, but Lord, we've done this for you and that for you. We did miracles and that for you. And the Lord, you know what the scriptures is, the Lord turns and says, I never knew you. Get away from me. And what he really felt was it had to do with the iniquities or not allowing the Holy Spirit to just search their hearts and get things cleaned up. That's what he said. He had a team with him and the Lord began to show him what his team, they were going through. Not to condemn them, just to show them. And he began to speak the thoughts of each member of his team, what they were having. And all of them were just wailing and crying and getting it right before the Lord. So I guess he goes now to different places and speaks this message because it's a preparation. It's a preparation. That we as Christians can't live the same old, same old way. That it's time to allow God to do that preparation work that's within us. All of us. From me first to my wife. And I've shared this with my wife already. To every one of you. Amen? Amen. To everyone. My cry is this. O oh Lord, create in me because I don't want my heart to be like it was before. Create in me a clean heart. And I hope that will be your cry too. Amen? Today I want to give you the opportunity. There you go. If this word has spoken to you, 
as I was speaking it. I don't want to know what your thoughts are. I don't want to deal with any of that that's between you and God. I don't need to know. But if there have been things in your heart that you've been harboring that have been wrong at times, then we know what those things are from the heart where many things that Jesus spoke about, adulteries, fornication, evil thinking, imaginations that are wrong, murders, whatever, jealousies. If there's been things in our hearts that we know have been wrong and we've been dwelling on and we need God to help us get over it, I want you, just for a short moment, for a short time, or however long it takes you, to make your own altar at where you're seated. You can just make your own altar. You can sit back down. And just ask God to create in you a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. And I just want you to take a short time, just some time, whatever is necessary. And ask God for help to clean up your thoughts, your ways, your issues. If there are things that are there. And I want to pray for you right now and then I want to ask you to just take that time for a little bit. Father, I thank you, God, for your word today. It wasn't an easy word that I had to share. No, God, I even said, am I even worthy to share it? Because I'm going through it myself. Personally, Lord, I want a clean heart. I don't want to think in my old ways, especially if they're wrong. According to you, I need to be cleaned up. Father, and those here today that you have spoken to need the same thing. Help them today to lay those things down. Help them to ask you to search their hearts out, not just to search them out, but Lord, where they know there are things that are wrong. Let them acknowledge it to you and repent of it and ask for your help to be rid of it. Lord, we have our motto this year is to stay free. 2023. This is all part of staying free, God, and even coming into more liberty, God. Help us, Lord. Help us to be your church that when you come back, Father, we would be what you're looking for, a church without spot and wrinkle. Help us to realize, Lord, there may be thoughts that God issues in our hearts that may come at times and poke their heads into our minds, but if we don't dwell on them, oh God, but we bounce them out, Father. We're clear of those things. They won't take root. It's those things that we dwell on that take root, and then one day we will act on. Help us, God, be clear. And be clean. Create in us, Lord. So take that time necessary right now. Just get before the Lord. Just sit down in your seat if you want. Again. And bow yourself before Him. Humble yourself before the Lord. Even as 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Let them just... And when you're done praying, done praying today, you can just quietly take your leave and be on your way because you've done business with God.